As I mentioned before, Michael Phelps is with us, Cherry Miller and Associates, Realtor Extraordinaire. Well, we have five offices. I work for Sherry Miller and Associates. We have, our main office is in the Yucca Valley area, but we also have Joshua Tree, 29 Palms, and Morongo Valley Realty. We recently opened an office in Palm Springs, and we also have the rights to the name of Pioneer Town Realty. Holy cow. So, we, so we're we're pretty big up here. Pretty, pretty, pretty. I guess it's easy to find you. You just look at any any realty's name out there, call and they'll ask for Michael and he's there. So <laughs> <laughs> just just a little humor for a for a uh I don't even know what day it is. Wednesday morning, I guess yeah. it is. So let's chat a little bit because a couple of the things, I mean, we I talk Michael a lot on USDA loans, and most people, you know, being in Orange County, LA County, lots of uh lots of Riverside County doesn't qualify for that USDA area, but a lot of the areas that you're in, USDA, I'm sure, is a pretty popular pretty popular loan because we just don't know a whole lot about rural living. You know, I saw in the notes that we have talking about a septic tank. I, I mean, I've dealt, dealt with some of those, but, you know, why would I even care about that? Well, a septic tank is what you use to get rid of the waste products might be the politest way to put it. <laughs> um, it's, we don't have sewer up here except in a certain part of Yucca Valley. It's just been mandated by the state. And for those that don't know what a septic tank is, there's a holding tank that has uh, one, maybe two leach lines that go out maybe 40, 50 feet, depending on how big your property is. And all the, waste products uh, kind of just filter into the ground and you know that's how you get rid of the stuff it does require some maintenance not a lot but and they're pretty effective for many many years now when you say it filters into the ground because i'm a city boy um is it really filtering into the ground or is it filtering into a tank in the ground no it's a, it actually filters into the ground wow okay i never knew that yeah that's mostly the water products i mean the solid products uh, pretty much stay in the tank. And then about once every three or four years, I have mine pumped out just because. Okay. So, you, so, so then you have, you'd be a pump them out. And now is that when we're, when you're doing a, a real estate transaction, are we, what are we watching for? Are we watching for, do you have to have a septic tank inspection? Is that, or is there a disclosure report for that? How does, how does that work? It depends on what kind of loan you're getting. If you're paying straight cash, you can just accept the house as is and anything that happened to be wrong with it. But every lender requires a septic certification and from a certified plumber and a termite inspection too. And usually the seller pays for those here. Okay. And so now, now I said that you're pretty much rural living. Is that a, is that a good... Uh um analysis out in that area yes that that is correct okay so tell me what we need to know a little bit different than what i would expect in city living from a real estate transaction because i'm 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 real new at it well i was born and raised in pomona and grew up in monterey area ontario california area so i'm pretty familiar with what goes on in the city out here it was kind of a culture shock at first because we don't have all the stores that you would normally have real close to wherever you live. When you go to the store, for instance, you have to buy enough stuff to last you for a week, maybe two weeks. And some of the people that live out here live maybe 20, 30 miles from the nearest store. So you got to, you know, that's one thing you have to, you have to plan ahead. The, another good thing about it is there's not as many people as there is in a big city. So it's usually a lot easier to get in and out of stuff. You know, it, that makes so does that sense. Mean that, so what does that do with our with the home values? If there's less people, does that have an impact on, on home values? Well, home values here up until about five years ago were pretty low. But since uh, the influx of the tourists that come to Joshua Tree National Park, which we get about 5 million visitors a year, people start buying Airbnbs. And we get more and more people here all the time. So home values have gone up. They've gone up tremendously. Uh, about six months ago, they took a sharp drop, but they've 
starting to rebound here at a pretty good pace. So now's now's the time to get out there and buy buy something. Is it is it is it mostly is it primary residence? Are people full time there? Or is it vacation? I know you mentioned Airbnb, but what is your general population? Most of the people that live here are full time residents. We do have an influx of snowbirds. And as far as Airbnb goes, we had so many of them that the counties and the town of Yucca Valley, the city of 29 Palms had to put a limit on them. They were actually just overpopulating the area and driving the renters out. You know, I have, I have a friend that uh, had his house sold out from under him that he was renting. And now he's living in an RV with his two kids and a wife till he can afford to buy a place. That's pretty interesting that... <laughs> Now, twenty when you start talking twenty nine palms, that am I, am I right? That's pretty close to the military base, then, isn't there? Yes, uh, the Air Ground Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center, as it's officially called, has um, been around since General Patton was serving in the U.S. Army. The Army got tired of it, so they gave it to the Marines. It started off as a glider field, and has progressed into the world's largest combat center where you can actually go out and uh, train for desert warfare. You can drop bombs out there. They do tank maneuvers, uh, train with cannons, anything you can think of they do out there other than nuclear stuff. Wow. So that must be pretty impressive because I've, uh, when we were, when we were one of the radio affiliates that we've had used to be right uh, adjacent to the Miramar Air for air base, and you know you just sit out there and watch, and you're just uh, fascinated and and uh, very very humbled when you start watching some of the planes and equipment that's going over. It's a uh, pretty amazing feat. Continue our conversation, chatting with Michael Phelps, Cherry Miller and Associates, and a bunch of other real estate names out there in the 29 Palms area. He's giving us a little bit of education this morning on rural living. So how did what Michael? What ended up moving you to? You said from the Pomona and Monterey area out to, you know, into the Twenty Nine Palms area. What what put pushed you out that way? Just got tired of um, living in crowded conditions out here. I at night, if I want to walk out on my front patio, I can see the stars. I can see the Milky Way. I don't have a lot of light pollution. Don't have a lot of noise pollution. It's just a, for me, a better way of living. Interesting. Yeah, you know something, and it's uh, so, so so you get to relax a little bit more and not have the hubbub of the city. Yeah, that's correct. It's it's, it's a trade off though, because you said in the last segment that you have to deal with, um, you know, going, you know, make a plan to go to the grocery store or whatnot. Is that is that accurate? Yes, unless you live like inside. Yucca Valley city lim or town limits. We're a town. I keep getting them mixed up with 29 Palms. They're a city. Anyway, uh, if you're inside the town limits, you're not too far away from the stores. But if you get out towards Landers, especially a place like Johnson Valley, which is way out there, when you go to the store, you buy all your stuff. You know, It's a long way to run to the nearest convenience store to pick up uh, some milk or whatever else you may need there. You know, you're looking at maybe a half hour to 45 minute round trip in some of these places. So if I, I better, I better plan ahead if I think I'm going to run out of my Tito's. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> so I have a friend that lives in Northern California, and when he goes to Costco, he goes into Reno, and he's got a cattle trailer that he loads up, and he's got maybe six months worth of supplies there, and his bill at Costco is, I mean, last time I went with him was almost nine thousand dollars. Wow. He Holy only goes cow. Like two or three times a year. That's a pretty, that's pretty, well, you know, some, there's some people I think right now in, in the uh, Big Bear area that might be contemplating a little bit more, stocking up a little more than they were before. <laughs> it's a good idea since we live in earthquake country. Even if, yeah, you well, you know, something years ago, you know, that was uh, the, I guess the back road. I don't know if it still is, but we used to take, uh, we were going from Orange County to Lake Havasu. We, I think we used to go right through 29 Palms and uh, the little airport there on the, the right side. But but it was all des desolated. You didn't see anybody for a long time. You didn't want to break down in the middle of the night. This is true. It's still that way. Once you get outside of the 
town limits of uh, city limits of 29 palms the airport's about three miles out on the right hand side and you can go for a long ways and not see maybe another car or anything that's one of the ways i i ride motorcycles and that's one of the ways i like to go i like to take a day ride i'll go out to havasu and then back up maybe uh i-40 and come down through uh Old Woman Springs Road, Barstow area, and home. So it takes a day to do it, but it, it's definitely relaxing and and fun. That way you get to go get and see a little bit of traffic that you don't get to see very often. Yeah, you don't see <laughs> much of it. The worst time to go is like during Easter week or uh, maybe a holiday weekend because everybody in the world's got a boat and it's a two-lane road out there. So if you want to pass somebody, you got to be real careful because there's traffic coming both ways. So let me ask you another question because you said you're so far you don't have a lot of uh, um, sewer. Do you have do you have electricity out in that area or do you or water? How does how does that work? Yeah, we have uh, public water. We have you know electricity in most places. A lot of places in Joshua Tree will have power but no water. Sometimes they have water but no power. And if you want power, you got to talk to the or water. You have to talk to the respective agencies. Uh, last time I talked to the Joshua Tree Water District to bring water into a, a place was $75 a foot. So if you wow. were uh, like, you know, a thousand feet away from the nearest uh, public water, you're looking at like, what, 75 grand in order to bring water into your place. But you can drill wells. The last time I talked to the county, and I always advise people, when you buy a piece of bare land, check with the county as to what you want to build and if you can drill a well at one time you used to be able to haul water in but last i checked with them too they wouldn't allow you to set up new holding tanks with a pump you had to drill a well and then they had then they had to put a meter on it so but i always check because they kind of likes to change things and then they don't tell us and then we look like a big bunch of dummies <laughs> well that that happened you know that's not just in the rural areas that happens everywhere where the counties change things that uh kind of kind of give us curveballs yeah and they don't tell us that's the thing they never send out a bulletin you just find out the hard way now most of what you're dealing with is it is it new build or do you deal with is there resale or do, once you're out there people just stay for the we're getting a lot of new properties being built out here uh for whatever reason, you know, the big builders have decided to come out and, you know, make us more city-like, I guess would be a good way to put it. But still, I think maybe close to 80% of what we have out here is stuff that's already been built. So it's, re, you know, just reselling it. Is there, a, is there a large turnover of people or is it you know, I would think that, you know, if I came, if I went there from Orange County and moved out there, I would think that some people would say, you know, this is great and stay forever. And some would kind of go, you know, something, I'm not sure I can handle this uh, um, kind of a lifestyle where I'm so uh, far from, from everybody else. Yeah. Most people either love it or hate it. It doesn't seem to be a, I could take it or leave it type attitude, you know, or I could live with it, but i I didn't have to i won't it's people come out especially people that come from a green area because i deal a lot with the military and and we'll get a lot of people that come out from say from you know pennsylvania or someplace where there's a lot of green they'll come out here and wonder why i live out here well the weather out here nine months out of the year is fantastic it's the three months during summer which can get pretty nasty <laughs> do most people leave then uh, a lot of people do. Yeah, we got a lot of snowbirds that they'll come and go. They'll come in usually around October, November time frame and leave just about June when it starts to get over 100 degrees out here. Over 100 degrees. We're going to we'll talk about that when we come back. Continue our conversation. We're talking to Michael Phelps today. Learning about rural living. So got a, got a, gone over a lot of different areas here if you've missed them. You missed a lot, and we're not going to go back and tell you anything that you missed. You can go back and watch the show on Ron Siegel 1 on YouTube, Ron Siegel, the numeral one on YouTube. So, Michael, you talk about uh, you're, you're out there, and, you know, in, in, in the city life, we have to look at down payment assistance programs. 
I would venture to guess most of your areas between the VA loan and the USDA loan, you're not really worried about down payments too much, are you? Not usually. Every now and then we come across somebody that needs some help. And somebody like you will definitely have a program for them. And everybody else seems to either come in with a conventional loan, an FHA loan, or USDA and VA loans, which for a long time were the majority of the loans that we dealt with out here. Well, the VA loan to me, I mean, obviously that's for the, uh, the select and special few that have uh, served our country. Uh, that to me happens to be, I think, you know, of all the loans out there, it's probably the best one on the market just because the Veterans Administration wants veterans to own a home and they'll bend over backwards if, uh, if the lenders will do their job properly, you know, calling the regional lending centers to, you know, deal with appraisals and, well, you, don't, you probably don't have much condo, condo out there, do you? Not a whole lot. Yeah, so, you know, you don't have to deal with it, but in, in, the, in, the, in the city life, the condos, VA really wants people to, to they're, they're the veterans to get that loan. So, you know, make sure you're really looking at that anytime you're contemplating for that primary residence. What's the uh, age demographic you're dealing with out there, Michael? Well, when I first moved here, it seemed like uh, most people were in their 60s to 80s in that, in that age range. But things have changed over the last 15 years. We're getting a big influx of younger people. People can't afford to buy a home, say, in the uh, L.A., Anaheim area. So they move out here and they're younger people looking to get established, buy something. And some of them don't mind the commute back and forth, although it is kind of a long commute. And wow. so we're getting maybe in the yeah, 30s to 40s, a few, a few in the 20s, not too often, at least in my experience. So being that you're so far away from so many things, it, how, how do they deal with schooling and education then for the younger people? Well, we have two high schools up here. Well, actually three if you, you count the continuation school. The, uh, we have Yucca Valley High School and 29 Palms High School. We have uh, two junior high schools, which right now are starting to get pretty crowded due to the influx of all the new people. So there is talk, and it's only talk right now, of building another junior high school. I haven't heard any rumors about building a third high school up here yet, but that will probably happen in the future. So there's still there's opportunity out there for, for young families to get started. And, you know, especially nowadays, especially post, uh, post-COVID, you know, we learned during COVID how, how many people can actually go and get a job and work remote with all the technology that I apparently have a lot of challenge with. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I like to be, I like to be one-on-one -on -one with people more than anything else. Other than sending things out uh, via DocuSign, I, I don't do a lot of technical stuff. You need a, you need a millennial to help you, Michael. That's kind of, that, that's, uh, that's my world. Yeah. I have a 16 year old grandson that we're raising and he uh, helps me with just about everything that goes wrong with the computer. He'll walk in and go, oh, Grandpa, this is so easy. Check this. Click, 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 and he's done, you know, and it's like, oh, I feel like a knucklehead. You know, something, and, and you know, I'm, I'm not out there in the rural living, and I say the same thing because I call Josh and say, what the heck am I doing wrong? And he probably thinks I'm a knucklehead, too. So it's, So we're on the same page there. Yeah, it's uh, it can be a challenge if you're not used to using computers and stuff. It, you know, it's overwhelming. It's more mental, I found out, than anything else. I, I think, still think after college chemistry, and biology, I can certainly learn how to use a computer. Well, maybe that's where my problem is because I had trouble with uh, chemistry and biology. So maybe that's maybe that's my shortcoming. Let's talk a little bit about. You know, if, you, if you're buy, buying, how do you know? You know, I look and, and again, I'm not, I, I've told everybody, I might not have shared this with you, Michael. I, I used to import screwdrivers. I've imported millions of them. I don't know how to use them and I don't know which end to use. Um, but when you're talking about buying raw land, is, is it tough getting the zoning that you want or is it a long process? How does that work? Most of the area out here is zoned for residential living anywhere from just a regular city lot all the way up to you know five acres 
five acres is the the biggest land, uh, um, biggest amount of land that we have. I don't know if I said that right. And then we have also bigger parcels too that are zoned for that. But as far as you need to like rezone something, say you're going to start uh, a glamping site, you would have to petition the county for rezoning and they can guide you through the process. Is it a long process? From what I hear it is, I've never personally tried it myself. Interesting. So, so, so someone would buy the land and then start that process. Obviously, you don't want to start that process and then find out that you can't get the land. That's correct. And and are what is a normal is is, is or is there any such thing as a normal parcel size? If I'm going to look at building a single family home on a lot, well, normal like inside the city or town limits of uh, Yucca Valley is about a half acre. My house that I'm at is six tenths of an acre, and that that's a pretty good size lot. I, some of the cities I've lived in, you might have three houses and a half acre, you know. And then if you get out in the rural areas, an acre and a quarter, all the way up to maybe forty acres, you can buy, and it'll be zoned for residential. Wow, everybody can get I think five houses on a half acre, maybe maybe because they stack them on top of each other. But that's a whole different whole different subject. Um, in, you, there's a lot of interesting stuff that you've got going on out there. It's almost like, you know, I've been, I, I, I sh share that I helped with my first family with a loan in 1983 and I thought I had a good handle on things. I talked to you and I'm like, is this the same industry that I'm in? It's a, other than, you know, I'm obviously I understand the USDA loans and the VA loans, but you're in a whole different world out there having to understand, you know, uh, driving a half an hour to go get food, you know, go, I mean, Last night, my grandkid, my my kids and grandkid came over, and on the spur of the minute, and said, "Okay, we want to go to Taco Tuesday." You don't get to do that, do you? It's like it's a plan. Yeah, if you're in the rural areas, you definitely got to plan that. Inside the city limits of you know, like I said, twenty nine and, and town limits of Yucca Valley, it's usually not too bad. It's just this time of year we get such a huge influx of people that come out to the monument or just come out to get away and it can be a little bit of a challenge getting into some of the uh, better restaurants in town some of the better ones are locally owned which is good family businesses we still have a lot of those here we don't have too many big box stores such as we have a super walmart now and a home depot but other than that we usually have just you know regular businesses that most people own them you know personal business family business so I should ask you before we go, because my wife's going to, I'm sure going to ask me as soon as I tell her that you're on the air with me. 29 Palms Del Taco, is it still there? Yes. Okay, so if we go out to Lake Havasu, we can still stop there at the 29 Palms Del Taco. That was her favorite uh, stopping spot on the way. Yeah, it's on the highway across from Stater Brothers. On the, it's on the north side of the highway. <laughs> I, I, love it. I appreciate, <laughs> appreciate you coming on and giving us a little education on rural living. If you want to know more information about living in 29 Palms, Yucca Valley, or that general area, Michael Phelps, world of knowledge. We can uh, give him a call and chat with him right there. Call me at 800-306-1990. happy to put you in touch with him. I'll give you his number, and you can start that world to, to rural living.